King Rhaegard grown the wealth of Illyria and its holdings to a point where even those in the slave cities looked to them with great jealousy, and with wealth there came people. Those who came to Tolos, to Illyria, seeking new prospects and better lives, thinking that the bustling and prosperous city would be their best chance at seizing it. And as time passed, more and more people came, and the streets of Tolos soon found themselves busy with trade, with new families. Some of them joined the city guard and king's forces in order to earn a place to live in decent pay. Others began to build shanty buildings, and those with some wealth moved into houses, with more and more being built each day. Many ships sailed to Illyria itself, carrying wealth and profits from the new markets and trade that the city brought in, but also bringing with them more people seeking places to live. Illyria was large for an island, bustling in size now too, but it was an island and islands have limits, especially when a lot of the land was devoted to the dragon pit, one which had been recently expanded just in case an egg should hatch. Rhaegar paid well to ensure the city of Illyria and Tolos both continued to grow and grow and grow, but when people heard of this investment from the king, well, they thought the king wealthy, and more came to Illyria, to Tolos, to Mantaris to witness the wealth of the king. Eventually, there were too many to even keep within the streets. The growth in population was vastly exceeding the growth of development, the growth of building. They were simply growing too fast. Yet when King Rhaegar turned to look out on the lands before him, these so-called ruins, he saw possibility. Soil that still had some fertility, space that was unused. If Illyria was to prosper, it would need to grow. And so a royal decree was put forth. The establishment of a colony, a town of small size, supported by coin and military. And Ogaria the Dothrak lands, but was protected by mountains to its north and to its sides, and it was fertile enough land suitable for a large city, with a keep to support it too. But the city was just a dream, for there was only a town, a small town. Rhaegar decided to take the place into his direct ownership, granting the Black Cliffs away in order to focus on these new regions. With majesty, he rode out to investigate the lands, ensuring it was clear for all views and eyes around. You could see mountains, hills, but between those hills was a river with plenty of land around it, fertile land. It was perfect. And so the people began to be moved. Those who could not find a home within Tolos or Mantaris found themselves being given a small parcel of land and a decent bit of gold. As slowly a town began to build up, lower numbers to begin, at some points there were more troops than there were settlers, but there was a bright potential to this place. The first step had been made to reclaim the relics and ruins of Illyria. Dragons flew, and soon the people of the Old Blood would return to their ancestral home. Rhaegar was becoming older, feeling age finally take to him, a strange noise any time he walked, a weight in his bones, and he knew that this job may not be finished in his lifetime. But his dynasty would restore their home, and his dynasty began with his boy, Aemon. He grew more and more each day, in many ways as fast as strong strongest majesty did. The mace is the master of those that, for his age, he struggled with the blade more than others, and he seemed to have a formidable mind when it came to the battlefield. Even without a dragon, he would dominate with armies, provided he could handle his temper. Whenever he looked at his son, sleeping in, egg, in bed with a dragon egg beside him, Rhaegar felt a warmth within his heart, and just a little bit of worry. Hello guys, and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, A Game of Thrones, where we are continuing as King Rhaegar of Illyria. And he has given out his decree. Uh, the overpopulation in Mantalis and Tolos shall be met with the opening of a new colony in Anogaria. Which is certainly going to end up being an expensive colony. Uh, any region in Valyria is going to end up being expensive. But the difference between anywhere down here is all of these would be outposts. These we will have to take through military force pacify, or not military force, but we'll have to pacify the region because of how volatile 
these regions are. And only once we've sort of pacified these regions can people come in. Whereas here is a bit more calm. Here there's a bit more ability in space, especially with the river flowing through. So instead, it is a colony, meaning we get no tax income. But obviously, it will slowly begin to level up through events. So we are going to be directly owning this for a time. Uh, which means that we are going to pass the Black Cliffs on to um, uh, Hahema, who has served as my Master of Laws. So he's being rewarded with the Black Cliffs. It's not too great a province anyway, so I don't care massively about losing it. Again, it's about 2k men, and I've got 21k. But I want to... You know, we're beginning colonization. It's been clear colonization be, has been on the, the, the books for a while. Just look at it. Oof. I love looking at this opinion map and seeing how everybody slightly hates me. But um, <laughs> we we need to be colonizing one at a time, essentially. So what I'm going to be doing is building this up and then passing this on and doing so our entire way through all of Valyria. Yes, we're going to be slowly building up this, this county capital. I believe that building any of these is pointless while it's still a colony. I believe I have to wait until it's no longer a colony to build them up. So I will not be building them up and instead um, we'll be using coin for any event that is likely to show up there. Of course, at the end of our session, our affair with our daughter ended in a stillborn child, uh, also named Rhaegar. Um... I don't know if that event or that affair is going to continue. What you already want... To, I'll just ask him politely. Because already we have... I was about to say, okay. Recently I've noticed a pitiful state of my daughter, Princess Visenya. I've just been informed that the cause of her aches and fatigue is a case of the flu. Oh, a very bad case of the flu. Yeah, get a physician. Hey, what the fuck? Let's, uh, let's sway him. Because I think the other two... Oh no, he hates me. Do I have his wife in prison? No, he has his wife in prison. I forgot that fact. <laughs> Can't blame me for that, mate. It was your choice. My wife has stopped touching me. Or even looking at me. And now whispers of her and that raging fat pig prince Jonas of Mountain and Vale. Um, it's not going to matter with it. I mean, the dude's at the wall. If she's somehow navigating secretly to the wall, then that's really impressive. News from Yunkai. Rajdaha Zomiliak has been elected as the new wise master. Uh, probably because we just demolished Yunkai so hard in that last war that uh, they needed somebody new to take over. Uh, inviting him on... What would be best for me? Probably diplomacy. Diplomacy is, is is what he's good at. So hopefully we'll be seeing. Obviously, we'll, we still want people to be populating these areas. We do still want a growth in population, but we don't want the growth in population to overstep the growth of the uh, the the towns around these. They say Hagon has escaped the, the dungeons of Lord Maelor Keltigar of Claw Isle. Has built a... Uh, okay, well this is Zalagon's kid. Zalagon already having a kid is uh, interesting. You know, Svenera is very stubborn when she plays with her children. Uh, stubborn, stubborn is purely bad. My apprentice practically lives in the kitchens. Why, why do I get these events for random children I've imprisoned? And why, follow up question, why have I imprisoned her? Is she from Yunkai? Yeah. Um, every night since he's been given it, my son Aemon has been sleeping with his dragon egg, but he's remained cold. As the months slip by, we've given up hope of it hatching anytime soon. He's lost prestige for that. Let's release from prison. Or am I able to ransom her? I'll take the gold then. You want your... Last son Janus to be legitimized. I'll take I'll take the piety loss and then give them have a legitimate kid, so that this actually will pass down to someone. We have another succession crisis. The dragons live once more, and they tell me Commander Valerian 
now rides Hagon into battle. So Hagon has a new rider, and it is a Valerian at the King's Gate. So is he the commander of the Gold Cloaks? I'd assume so. That would be a terrifying sight if you're you're part of the city, <laughs> like uh, living in King's Landing is is known. The commander of the Gold Cloaks rides a dragon. <laughs> Invite to plot to kill who? I don't know. Who, sure, I'll join that plot just because it's my lover. I am worried about Aemon. Aemon is—it's not just the fact that Dragon Egg isn't isn't hatching. Perhaps perhaps it was a cold clutch. You know, it may have been a, a cold clutch in the first place. My worry with Aemon is is the sort of he's a poor fighter, willful, contentious, and paranoid. Like he's. He'll be very interesting when he grows up, that's for sure. And I always love that sort of stuff. I don't want every single character to just be a genius good guy. I, I mean, if you've seen my House Crate series, you know that I'm... A... Why does this event... I'll just confront this random Jonas dude. I don't care. He admits I've... I don't... This this sort of stuff annoys me just in CK in general. This distance is way too great for an affair to even make sense. Ugh. No, I'm not going to denounce them publicly. I'm just upset with you. Queen Dry Fruit. Let's also sway you as well. Because I feel like we're not going to get much better with him. And the one I should probably be swaying is Demon Pass. But this dude just seems pure evil. So maybe, maybe not. Maybe his kid will be better. <laughs> Um, let's see. Let's let's build up a castle town. Um, because obviously the problem has been population, so we do want to at least make an effort to have the population not be such a problem there. I probably am wrong, and you probably can build in in colonies. I just remember that there there's certain like, maybe it's just forts like these that you can't build in, or maybe I'm a fool. So she just has no family. She's just a random Asossi. Well, she can stay around then, because I'm always happy to have Valyrians around. A Dothraki horse lord. Oh, buddy. Go on, make my day. Uh, raise local levies. Let's get rid of him. See how Majesty is doing in battle. I feel bad we we injured and maimed Majesty, but obviously Majesty has uh, has returned. My wife comes over to me and begs a private word. She asks if you allow us to take one of the serving girls as her handmaiden. She says she's become very fond of her and believes she would serve well. And the two of them would get along wonderfully. It, it costs me a tiny bit of prestige, but we'll do it. A pox has broken out in Mentaris. That is certainly not good news. I'd be surprised if they come back so soon. Okay, Eamon's getting a little better with his sword. Because, I mean, I, I'm i probably not the one to teach you with swords. I suck with swords. Hox is broken up in Illyria and Toralos. Let us... Am I able to close the gates? A son was born to... Okay, just a random dude. Let's ask her to spend some time with me. But let's see, am I able to close the gates? Yeah. We'll open the gates in a bit. But I don't want to risk a pox. It's nice finally being with Elena for a while. We, we shall take the diplomacy option, because diplomacy is obviously best with relations. Trying to mend her cheating on me with some random dude from the Vale. I mean, I'd question if the kid is mine. But this evil bastard is almost definitely mine. He's suffering from the epidemic. No. If you're suffering from the epidemic, you get thrown out. 
We can't take risks. Let's go with one with in painted dice. Where's he got troops raised? He's not at war. I guess they're just maybe leftover troops. Because sometimes you end up with that. The handmaiden suffering from it. Bye bye. <laughs> oh my god! This is worryingly affecting way too many people. I didn't realize if Pox was going to be this bad. And it's own like all of the poxes have only spread through this region. I've not seen one in West yet. This is like the new Seatgate Free update where they just have way too many poxes and it ruins everything. Good fun. See, so I could change my realm authority. And there's see no reason to legalize first night. Controlled realm and heritage. Yeah, can't pass to another realm. Don't want to change slavery. So, I guess I do want to change the... Let me check the council consideration. Okay, it's, it's very difficult for me to be able to read my council. Maybe, let me guess, Loyal Storm Singer. Because they'd likely vote with me. Let's get a new High Admiral. And let's try and increase the realm authority. It doesn't work, it doesn't work. It would just be very useful to to have. Because, I mean, it, it's, it's a decrease in, in vassal opinion, but it's a very small one. And the benefits outweigh it. Especially since we're slowly building up more and more vassals. And less, like, direct-owned land. Okay, they approved it. That's going to get our, our uh, money up a little bit as well. It's a good fun, really. I will never say no to more money. That's both me and Rhaegar would say that. Your Hand of the King has occluded himself and is unable to perform his tasks. Yeah, I don't think anyone's able to perform their tasks right now. How's it, sp it Oh, it's spreading real bad. So I say, is it fading? No, it's still spreading. Ugh. There are things you can do against plagues, if I remember right. My unwed daughter Ray has been indiscreet. She's been hiding a pregnancy from me uh, and now presents me with her child. Hmm. <clears throat> I'll, I'll take the press teacher. He's, 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 he's of my line. We'll take her. She wants to obtain a dragon egg. I don't know if that's good. Marrying you to the Lord of the Vale would be very funny, but I think I want to... Well, it looks like the affair continued. <laughs> I guess suppose being secluded <laughs> made us forget. Well, I mean, with Illyrian. Who's to stop us? Yeah, 76. 76 is fine. I'm fine with Set remaining food to five. <sighs> Alright, I'll end seclusion. I'm going to reopen the gates. Because I don't want to be eating each other. If, it, if, it, if we start getting more people who immediately get the pox, then... Yeah, it's just spreading. It's not fading at all. I mean, going through the ruins isn't bad, but, like, still. Uh, I could marry... Yeah, sure. I mean, he's an old dude. Don't know if... He's already got a kid, so it doesn't really matter. All right, everybody seeks to kill each other. My wife is pregnant. They say that the dragon supports more and Lord's Monford Chittering now rides uh, Maraxis into battle. Does this dude have Valyrian blood? He doesn't have bloodlines. I don't know how he's a dragon rider. Did I miss up a setting or something? Because it feels like we've had a few people who aren't Valyrians and yet they're dragon riders. I don't know what... Maybe maybe I messed up a setting and everyone's a dragon rider now, but I couldn't imagine that being a feature. He must have somewhere down the line have um, Valyrian um, in, a, in their blood. 
port's feeling very crowded. It is actually. Uh, fine. I'll ask. I'll ask some to leave then. Because I don't. I don't want an overcrowded court. I can build up court size, I believe. I can't remember which one it is. It's, it's probably Castle Town. That will increase the size. Building some barracks would probably be good in Tolos. Or maybe maybe in Man Mantanis itself. Oh no, it would be upgrading in Mantanis. Um, wait, for 76? Oh, we'll take another sec. Is that another egg? Reading dragons is a dangerous game, but we have managed to obtain a new clutch of dragon eggs from Majesty. Wonderful. A daughter was born to Kuloko Stegon and Princess Vesenia the Dove. Named Liana. So this is my yeah, this is my probable. I will name you Vesenia. So this is probably my blood as well. Let's pick. Uh, humility. Sure, I'll make you Valyrian and then immediately <laughs> ransom you off. Oh, he wouldn't accept. I will just release you. I don't know, all these young guy prisoners probably aren't helpful for me. But do I have. Uh, this is, he's my only other prisoner. Let's just run to him. Why? But if I have another son through my wife, now that she's pregnant, I'll definitely. Even if, honestly, even if it's a girl, I'll give her the dragon egg. Just because Eamon is struggling with, with his own dragon egg. We're looking. Is it the same? Yeah, it's the same color. It had religious scrolls. For 50 gold? Sure. Let's have a look at these uh, these scrolls. They're Valyrian scrolls. It can be monthly piety. Interesting. Who is this? Why do I care? Why am I her educator? I don't, I'm not paying any money on that. Where's my son, Aemond? Let's get him the highest level of education possible. And we're going to have to pick a new... Oh, a daughter. Okay. Um, stewardship or Marshall? I mean, I think he's got higher Marshall, and everything about this dude screams that he's going to be ruling through a uh, sword, not through stewardship. So, uh, my, my second daughter has been born. Or the third, if you count my bastard. A daughter was born to King Rhaegar of Illyria and Queen Elena Dryfruit, named Illyria. Um, let's look at some names. Helena. Rhaera. Race. Dana. I like Dana. Dana Cinder. She is slow. That's unfortunate. Uh, we'll take a look in a second. Uh, let us get her duty. To all my subjects, the inheritors of Khafre Is it just... I don't especially care about that region. Ah! Well, maybe I shouldn't have been so harsh upon him. No, 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 he has not failed to get a dragon. Instead, he his egg has hatched. Young Prince Aemond rides upon the she-dragon Faxalex. Well, good for my son. Majesty has her first child, and it is ridden by my own boy. Wonderful, wonderful. Such a young age, too. Okay, I went to vote. Seems like they've just given themselves a second succession crisis here. And it looks like the pox is... yeah, the pox is fading. Wonderful. Hmm... Feudal or city? Let's get feudal. How are things going here? Am I able to... I can't even hold it. Okay. I've risen so fast to the top that people regard me with envy. Hmm. Alright. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll... She's just bored as a child. We'll give... We'll, we'll... If we could get her facility up and she'll have another, that'll be good. The money should re- Ooh. Taxes. 
You gotta love when the taxes come in. Yeah, so I believe I believe you can build in provinces, but it, you won't see any benefits to doing so until it until it's actually built up because of the colony modifier, which it reduces levy size, reduces supply limits, and it reduces fort level. Like even if I built the castle town and got one point tax limits, like the minus two levy size and the like means it's not really worth it. And then colony one reduces tax value by forty eight. Oh my God, the Senny's had another kid. So I don't think there's a point building up until it is actually, quote-unquote, built up. And obviously, as I've said, there's going to be events which could make it cost money as well. So there's not much point in, in building things up early. It's going to take a long time to build up. Like, a long time. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? Oh, I think you're a young man, actually. I mean, all the cows usually are. A few weeks ago, a Dothraki noble named Cromano Jomo <laughs> arrived in Illyria seeking hospitality. Apparently, he's on a tour of foreign lands. So, of course, welcome to him. He attended feasts and functions and got on well. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, I don't think I got on quite as well with the rest of the Dothrak. Let's cut them off, Shaporash. The gods of Yaiti Reformation. The ancient gods of Yiti. It's a UT, no, I don't say what, YT. UT religion has gained great power. Rather than abandoning the old ways, Moonstone Emperor Chai Quen, the most powerful priest, have decided to reform the gods of UT faith in order to defend its followers from infidel invasions. Look at them over there. If they're faster than me on Dragon Back, I'd be surprised. Okay, we, we've got them in the Black Cliffs. Oh, just look at that. When Majesty rides into battle, they've no chance. And now we've got potential to have multiple dragon riders if our son rides with us in battle once he's of age. As he's also a dragon rider. And hopefully, even beyond that, I hope when Rhaegar passes on that um, his, um, his, his Majesty will, will go to a, a child of mine rather than fleeing. Because that's kind of why you build dragon pits, so that dragons don't make lairs and run off in that sort of way. I think slow or not, it is practice to and part of the tradition to have her, especially now that she's so young. I mean, it's basically in, in, in House of the Dragon, as soon as, I believe it's Viserys... Or it's either Viserys or Aegon. Whoever's born in that one episode, as soon as they are born... Well, no, 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 it's it's one of the, the, the Jace kids, so it's her third kid. As soon as they're born, the one he names after his lover. Oh, and another stillborn. Perhaps her fertility's not great. But uh, as soon as that kid is born, they they place a, a, a dragon egg within its um, its cradle. So it makes sense to go that way. Travelers uh, bring rumors of fire and blood. They now said the dragons have once more, and Alaris of Black Cells now rides Hagon into battle. Hagon's had a. <laughs> this dragon's had a wild time. They're just going from person to person here. Well, at least they're, they're clearly more Valyrian, so they make sense to ride Hagon. Is there anything we should build in, Tolos? My poor Dana is so unresponsive, slow, slow to learn the most basic thing. Sometimes I wonder if her slow man is a result of her mother drinking so much while she was carrying her. Wow. That's a heavy accusation to make. Eamon loses her learning? You suck at teaching my kid, bro. I thought you'd be good at this. Am I able to switch over to be his guardian? I thought, no, I am his educator. He already has a rival? <laughs> He already, this 18 year old, he just absolutely hates him for some reason. Can't stand him. Uh, no, I'd rather have him on tax. Um, it was good to build in Tolos. I don't know if I need troops, really. If there's much point in building up barracks. Uh, we'll, we'll build up basic barracks, just because they're so cheap. Same here. 
Now, obviously, we already have barracks here. The only one we'd look will be these North Valyrian barracks, which give... I mean, heavy infantry is, is obviously good, but... And obviously, everything is cheaper to build here. Maybe it's worth building the ship... Yeah, I'll, I'll build a shipyard just because I want enough ships on the Isle to support the troops on the Isle. I don't want to have to use the ships from Tolos to, to move them and the like. The best we can manage it, the... The, the better we can manage it, rather, the, would be best. Um, let's exile these two. Don't know if I exiled her and then took her into house arrest because of the orders there, but uh, it's fine. There is a high lordship here. Okay, so it's like these, these, f okay. It's interesting to see these high lordships because eventually, obviously, the more land we have, the more we're going to be be delegating these lands, and the less we're going to hold ourselves. And that's that's part of the um, future planning we need to take in mind. It's why I'm less looking at this area and conquering all of Slaver's Bay because I want to have a full foothold. I mean, I already I've got 28k. I definitely have a foothold, so to speak. But, uh, well, hang on a minute. Maybe I never needed to sell them a dragon egg. Looks like they have their own way to get one. The dragon egg of Borak. They must have bought this dragon egg. Wow. There is an event that lets you buy a dragon egg, so I suppose after Marine failed to procure mine, they found another way, which... Hey, I'll take it. Sure, get a 66 year old married. I I will happily take some ta them taking someone else's dragon egg than taking Majesty's. That is more than fine. Ah, oh, he's reached the point where his models changed. Fifty years old now, Rhaegar. His son still not reached maturity, but age of fifty. That's when you start looking at, at, at life and asking questions. Yeah, he is unmarried, so he's 14. Uh, I, I think marrying him to a woman of high position doesn't matter. I think we just look at Valyrian still. Um, are there high Valyrian still around? Uh, not within this list. Okay. We'll look at the Sussy Valerians then. She's 16, so around the same age. Not great by the looks of it. She's a member of the Elephants in uh, um, Volantis. Didn't realise that that gave um, modifiers. I don't know they had a, a, an Elephants and Tigers thing, but that's pretty good actually. Um... 18, 15, yeah, 14, <gasps> uncouth, zealous, and brave. That's an interesting set. An idolizer, rude, gluttonous, envious, stubborn, and a bastard, so definitely not. Attractive, envious, arbitrary, trusting. Oh, but they're Rossi. Okay. Um... I mean, this 14-year-old doesn't seem bad. I think we make this match. I think that seems to be the best one. Let's pay a visit on Dragonback, because last time I spoke with him, he uh, got pissed at me. So we'll, sit, we'll go on Dragonback instead. It, it's kind of the... When you want to remain within the clutch of... Um, or the power of Valyrian blood, your, your, your marriage options become limited. Which is why I do think eventually we are going to be marrying brothers and sisters. I do think if... if when we become Aemon, say Aemon has twins, we may marry them to each other if they're of different genders. Oh, no. Not Tiger. No, I want to honor him. 
That cat's been with me so long now. Poor little guy. Let's see, I have been observing the performance of the Master of Whispers, Alios, whose failure to a failure to become a burden on the entire realm. My supporters and I are asking you to remove him from office at once and appoint me to the council in his stead. Um, well, he has a lot of supporters. And Alios is only one better. Okay. Let's set you on scheming. News. Oh. Already? Wow. Only two years old. Her dragon egg has hatched. And uh, so the, her dragon is going to grow as she is. So this little two year old baby. <laughs> I mean, it probably just obviously hatched in her, her, her clutch. But already she has a dragon. Ves. Ves. Olic. Yeah, oh, we can't go for easy names, can we? My daughter-in-law, through who? Oh, through Eamon. Um, yeah, let's give her ambitious. But I'm her educator now, so let's also give her stewardship, just because a martial focus on a wife isn't too great. Unless she also gets a dragon, which is obviously a possibility, because she has um, Valyrian blood. At the very least, her kids would be able to, because they've got dragon rider blood through us. Prince Aemon is acting very selfish while playing with other children. Uh, he's going to hate me for it, but no. We, we, we need him to be learning how to not be a dick. Hopefully we can counteract to get a Targaryen madness. I, I mean, it would be called Sin, like Cinder Madness or Illyrian Madness, wouldn't it? Hopefully we can stop it altogether. We don't know what how Dane is going to end up. I think it's like when you're they're f around four that they find out. But if she's mad, then we have a further problem. Well, hopefully, Majesty will lay, lay another clutch soon. Thirty-four now. Marshall's kind of slowed down, so she's definitely not one of the. Um, Gains. Uh, we'll take the odds of her becoming ambitious. Oh, it didn't happen. Okay. But, well, I, in general, dragons end up with a lot of prowess. If I could. Sir Corliss. It's always a Sir Corliss. King Jaehaerys, the son of Anus. So, the grandson of Aegon. Um, if I. Look at maybe I'm I'm trying to look for dragons. I forget the Targaryens have lost their dragons, haven't they? As I said, I may give them some dragon eggs just to try and fix them around a little bit. Let's just look at dragons through the looking at dragon thing. Cool cord out of hiding. I don't know why she's in hiding. Um, should we read the dragons? Except like okay, Zeligon Zeligon is half the age and half the marshal, so maybe maybe the marshal is. Actually, no, going off Quicksilver, the Marshal isn't that bad. I guess I shouldn't be comparing to Balerion. That's a great way to say it. So, no, you know what? Majesty actually has pretty good. I guess they're listed as untamed because... Oh, because, probably because of her age, I would imagine. And then these two both have dragon eggs. Interesting. But, yeah, of, of the baby dragons, we own two of them. Pretty good. Who is more important to me, my lover or my wife? Ooh. I spent time with my wife. I think he loves them both. You want to, rep to replace Queen Elena and become regent? No. To Prince... He's only just come of age and he's immediately had a kid. Not with uh, a hair colour that's encouraging for two white haired. He's already stressed. Dear God, man. Um, what would you hear us? After the king in the west. Is there anything I can do to help you not be stressed, son? 
Oh dear. Yeah, he's now able to, to fight with me in battle. I'm almost tempted just to go to war with Marine, just so I can have my son riding with me in battle. See if I could claim their dragon egg, you know. <laughs> Obviously I can do dragon conquests anytime. Ah, but with winter coming, we, we definitely wouldn't be doing it in winter. You know, Rhaegar, Rhaegar's getting up there in age. If he's going to be making a move on Marine, it should happen in his lifetime, because we don't know how Aemon's going to be as a ruler. I don't even see what he, he doesn't seem to have an ambition. Oh, because he's not 16 yet. He'll, he, he's still got a li little bit more of education to do before he gets ambitions. I have five children. Well, I'm one off that. I don't know if bastards count. A famous writer proposes to compose my family chronicles. Absolutely. The, the, this, the, I want every generation to continue the family chronicles. I want the, the, the dynasty of, a, of House Cinder to be written for, for all to read, to, to learn about this, this mighty house. There's a single province independent here. Why? Uh, okay, that's just a weird one to be independent. Rhaegar Cinder is known as the Magnificent. You're goddamn right he is. Look at this man. All he's accomplished in his life, he should be known as Magnificent. Twists and turns of Aemon's tongue and the white lies he uses to make friends. It's making my head spin. How can such a young lad be able to lie so well? Could turn it into honest. I think we... He's been raising in such a way that I think deceitful makes sense for him. Of course, he has the dragon rider trait. Under my guidance, that can make it. Okay. Locked in dragon pit. But I mean, we drive up there. It's an ugly dragon! With misshapen wings and ugly scales. But that's a good thing, apparently? That gives them um, extra prestige. Wow. I suppose it's kind of like uh, I maybe like v um, Vega because Vega is so massive and in like a guttural ugliness, like a terrifying sort of ugliness. Um, Eris, another grandson to me. Totally not my actual son. Realistically, we should say I've had more than five children by this point, but. Um, <laughs> Let's not uh, look too far into that. Lord Paramount Davos Baratheon demanded a trial by combat from his captor, King Jairus, and proved his innocence by forcing Sir Damon Valarian to yield. Taken out his eye in the process by the looks of it. Jesus. Does he have one eye? Oh no, it's just a black eye. Okay. My daughter-in-law is a skilled steward. Wonderful. I'm worried about what trait my son's going to have. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have. Oh, wow. Brilliant commander. Well, I mean, maybe there's a little bit of Valyrian manners in him, but that is... He's very impressive. Already as aggressive leader and direct leader. Not a good fighter, but when you've got a dragon, he needs to be fighting on land. And here we go. Perhaps a perfect time to end this episode, guys, as... um. <laughs> The colony in um, uh, Anagoria has leveled up to now be an advanced colony, which uh, is wonderful news. And I have to look here, don't I? The levy size is it's it's still probably going to be zero. No, it's one thousand now. Okay, so it might actually be worth building up stuff in Anagoria then. In fact, we're going to build up uh, the base barracks. So yeah, it's actually worth building up here now, just a little bit. Still not going to be earning any tax, but we can finally get some soldiers to protect the new the new colonists in this area. And as this levels up, you know, we're going to slowly be looking towards this stuff. Though, will this be finished in Rhaegar's lifetime? Maybe, but definitely we won't be getting a second colony done in his lifetime. It seems like maybe one or two colonies per lifetime is what we're going to be getting here. So obviously this is going to be a very long-term project, so to speak. But yes, guys... What an, uh, what an interesting episode this has been, in all honesty. 
We have um, my uh, grandson, Jaharis, being born to me. Unfortunately, he's picked up slow. Maybe from... Maybe she was also drinking. I don't know. Uh, also, let's quickly give him... Um, I mean, he'll learn it from his father, I think. But look at this. Prince Aemond has come of age, and he is, I think, brutal is the way to describe him. And not only is he brutal, he rides a dragon, Fakalik, into battle. Four years old, but uh, growing quite well. An ugly, terrifying beast. But that's not the only dragon we have, as uh, we now have Princess Dana, only four years old, but with a dragon of her own after hers has hatched. I'm not sure how I pronounce it. Vesalicus, which is a nimble dragon, same as um, same as its mother, Majesty, also nimble. Well, I really have enjoyed this episode, guys. I think there's so much that we've started here. I, I was thinking we were just going to have a colony, but instead we have dragons... We have births, we have a grandson, and we have a an interesting future lying ahead of us in the in uh, Illyria. I want to thank you guys so much for all of the support so far. The the having any Patreon is surprising to me, <laughs> and for all of you who have been watching these videos and subscribing, thank you. We're so close to 900 subscribers now. If you know anybody who's interested in Crusader Kings content, please do share the share it with them. Um, I I love these stories being seen by people, and I'm so happy that people are enjoying them. Uh, if you're in interested in Crusader Kings 3 multiplayer, um, our, our server, Prometheus, is still uh, continuing. We're in session... Uh, actually, when this, when this comes out on Patreon, we'll be on session 8, but we'll be on session 9 when this comes out normally of our uh, Crusader Kings 3 campaign. We may be beginning a new campaign soon, so it's definitely worth joining now to, to, to see what's going to be happening in the future. Thank you guys so much, and I shall see you in the next episode. Until then. <laughs>